So I'll start with a little bit of background on myself. I uh, came from nothing near tech and innovation. I have degrees in political science and international relations. And I graduated at this a long, long time ago, about 15 years ago, uh, interested in getting into the policy space, but also having fallen in love with Chicago after doing my master's here. So I worked, um, I basically begged for an internship at the Chicago Council on Global Affairs as they were really just formulating how to be more than just a public uh, events organization. Um, they were thinking about how to be a think tank and I was just learning what a think tank was and so I showed up and sort of begged for them to hire me and they did and then I ended up working there for almost eight years, which was not at all on purpose. Um, but I learned a lot, obviously, in that time. I was the first intern in the studies department, and then the first program coordinator, and then the first program officer, and then the first senior program officer, and then I left as the first assistant director. So I got to kind of create my own jobs as I went. Um, and I got to work on a lot of really interesting policy subjects, like immigration and agriculture and energy, and a lot of things that were relevant to Chicago and the Midwest, but also resonating in Washington, D.C., so providing kind of an outside-the-beltway perspective on global policy issues. Um, having burned out on that work after about eight years, I had an opportunity to join an organization called the Illinois Science and Technology Coalition, uh, which is now based out of 1871. And they were managing something called the Illinois Innovation Council and a network, which was a convened group uh, supporting, at the time, Governor Quinn and helping to think about how to brand and position Illinois as a hub for innovation, uh, technology, and entrepreneurship, which in 2011 was pretty cutting edge for Chicago and Illinois. Uh, and I didn't know anything about innovation, so that was a pretty big risk for them to hire somebody with no background in tech and innovation to run a non-innovative governor's non-innovative states innovation council. Um, but what I did know a lot about was how to engage stakeholders, how to manage up to leadership groups, and how to take a table full of really powerful thinkers and point them in a direction to where they could come up with meaningful ideas for projects, for policies, um, and for initiatives that could be transformative. Uh, and whereas the work that I did for eight years at the council was really about just making those recommendations to policymakers, the cool thing about the work at the ISTC and the Innovation Council was that we got to start to build programs uh, that actually took those ideas and, and brought them to life. And in fact, while I was at the ISTC, we were very involved in helping the state of Illinois launch its open data portal. Uh, so I attended Hack Nights back in 2011 and 2012 uh, when this was a very, very new idea and partnered with organizations like, at, at the time, Smart Chicago on helping to work with stakeholders across the state of Illinois on kind of even just understanding what open data was and how cities like Rockford and Champaign and uh, suburbs down in the uh, metro east area outside of St. Louis could start to access that information at a state level or start to put their own information up on portals where folks could, like you guys, could start to mess around with it. So it was exciting to be part of that group of stakeholders when people were really just starting to try to understand what it meant to be innovative at a state level and how to engage local entrepreneurs and stakeholders in, in kind of moving the ball forward. Uh, Governor Quinn, as you may know, was not reelected. Governor Rahner, as you may know, was not particularly interested in funding anything, uh, including, <laughs> including our organization. Um, so I, uh, I had an opportunity to join World Business Chicago, which is the city's public-private economic development partnership, uh, and run something called Chicago Next, which in many ways was a similar group of, of leaders, of stakeholders, uh, who were there to help Chicago think about how to be innovative and how to be focused on developing entrepreneurial communities. Uh, and so this is kind of my, my theme or my thread here uh, on a personal note, is what I've realized 
that I really like about my own work is this idea of building communities, building ecosystems, whether it's in the policy space, whether it's at the state level, whether it's at the city level, but getting the right people around the table to problem solve is what I really love about my work and what, what keeps me going even when things seem sort of unbelievably frustrating or insurmountably challenging. Um, so a little bit about Chicago Next. Uh, we are a council of technology leaders, really uh, spanning industries and different you know, types of sectors. Uh, we're focused on driving inclusive growth and opportunity for Chicago's tech economy. We think about that in sort of four main focus areas, access to capital, talent development, industry innovation, and community impact. Uh, we run a, a handful of kind of signature programs that I'll touch on briefly, um, but we also kind of just handle whatever comes over the transom from the mayor's office, from our stakeholders, and from the community. Um, the mayor, Mayor Daly, actually had formed the first sort of cities focused tech council back in the 90s, uh, which then was sort of reconstituted as Chicago Next back in 2012. Uh, I came on board in 2015 and was sort of handed sort of a hodgepodge of different initiatives and things that Chicago Next had been working on without a lot of real clarity or focus for the structure of the initiative. And in the last couple of years, we've really been able to kind of mature the effort and think more about broader community impact, which has been critical. So we've been doing things like the Chicago Venture Summit. We'll do that again this fall. It's the Midwest's largest VC conference. It highlights Chicago as, as really a growing startup investment hub. There have been a number of, you know, sort of large scale investments in local companies that we've been able to kind of celebrate through this event. And importantly, I think, have been able to showcase um, Chicago's strength in supporting women entrepreneurs. So for example, this past year, we had nine companies pitch at the summit and all nine were uh, founded or co-founded by women. And so that was something that we were really excited to do because it wasn't really about kind of cherry picking. It was really, these were the strongest companies that we had. Uh, so we're excited to showcase them. We also run a program called Think Chicago, uh, which uh, historically has been focused on bringing students here to Chicago to kind of showcase what we do. Uh, while they are here, we have them work on a Civic Tech Pitch Challenge, and we've had a number of folks from Shy Hack Night, including Derek, come and help to mentor the students and work with them on their ideas. Um, something I would love to do going forward is actually bring the students back to Shy Hack Night after they pitch, because I think we've had some really great ideas develop out of the program. Um, but we often kind of don't know how to channel that energy from the students after they're done with the program. Uh, so that's something I'd love to talk to you guys about. Uh, we're also going on the road now and talking to students at universities. We've been this year to Michigan, UCLA, Caltech, Harvard. Tomorrow morning I leave for Spelman, Morehouse, and Georgia Tech. And then later this spring we're doing a number of additional events, both locally and kind of regionally. Uh, so if you work for a company that would be interested in going on one of these trips or just kind of would be interested in tagging along and helping tell Chicago's story to students on campuses, uh, it's another way that we really enjoy engaging the local tech community. And then, of course, we are continuing to do our signature programs around Lollapalooza and Chicago Ideas Week. So if you're currently a student, uh, those are great opportunities to be involved in our programs. Um, a summer program is around Lollapalooza, which is obviously kind of a draw. Um, we have usually about 1,000 applications for the 200 spots, but students get to come to kind of our Big Chicago camp for a couple of days and then also get to go to the festival, which is exciting. Um, another thing that I think is really exciting that we're working on is something called the Global, Entrepreneurs in, Global Entrepreneur in Residence Program, where we partner with universities to enable them to bring in foreign-born founders who otherwise would not be able to get H-1B visas to work on their entrepreneurial endeavors in-house at universities, essentially, as EIRs um, while they continue to grow their companies. So this program is just getting off the ground. It's been modeled after a couple of other things that states across the country have been doing, including New York and Massachusetts and, I think, Colorado. Um, but we're really excited that we have these local partners who are supportive of keeping folks here who want to stay here and grow companies here. Um, we work on a number of different sort of industry initiatives. In this case, right now, cybersecurity is really one of the issue areas uh, that I think are the most in focus. 
Um, the mayor has said he's committed to making Chicago sort of the premier place for cybersecurity by 2020. So right now we're looking at industry partners and you know how to support local industry growth, how to take that talent pipeline that's coming out of places like UIC and IIT and boot camp programs at city colleges and matching them up with demand here and then just raising sort of awareness about the issues and how the business community needs to sort of come together to resolve them. Um, I'm not going to do a lot of stats, but you know I think part of our job, part of my job, is to really tell the story of Chicago's innovation ecosystem, which has obviously grown a lot in the last few years. A um, number of these sort of innovation spaces, amount of investment, you know, amount of intellectual capital that's being produced. Um, I think there's a compelling story to tell that. Chicago has, you know, grown and matured quite a bit uh, as a place of innovation. Um, but one thing I know that we can continue to do better is be an inclusive place uh, for economic and entrepreneurial and innovative growth. Um, we know there are issues of disparity and inequality, um, and just like public health and safety and security present in Chicago. And you know, I think when I took over for Chicago Next in 2015, it was sort of like, here's your table, here's your group of leaders, you know, here are the people who are really making tech in Chicago happen. And unsurprisingly, it was the group of mostly white, mostly male, you know, maybe some under 40 because they're tech, but mostly 40-ish white guys who are really, you know, th these were my sort of stakeholders and obviously you know, everyone talks the talk of wanting to be more diverse and more inclusive, but when that's the group of people you have at your table, it's really hard to think about how to do that and be intentional and be thoughtful. Um, so we've started to change the table. And part of it is just understanding the data. And I, I can share this, we can circulate this around. A lot of this comes from work that Fabian Elliott's done with Black Tech Mecca, and I think he's, he's been here before and maybe shared some of that with you. Um, but you know we have real issues of diversity and inclusion when it comes to tech, and they're not unique to tech, but they're especially bad in tech when you really break it down in terms of employment share and leadership and support for entrepreneurs. Um, we're lacking nationally. Chicago is no different. Um, we have really, I think, incorporated and, and are trying to embody ideas of inclusivity across World Business Chicago, we talk about inclusive economic growth, we talk about inclusive entrepreneurship, uh, and we have actually launched a program focused on inclusive entrepreneurship, which has been really exciting. We received some grant money last year from the Blackstone Foundation uh, to launch a program that supports um, underrepresented communities of entrepreneurs across the city. And we put together a cohort of organizations, um, some of whom you know, are obviously very mainstream, and not necessarily historically focused on inclusion, and others who are. And our goal was this with this cohort was to bring everybody to a point where they realize they're all kind of swimming in the same direction. So whether it's 1871 or Bethel New Life, that there are things they can share, things they can learn from each other, ways that they can support each other with resources, and incentivizing those organizations with some grant money seems to be a great way to get everybody to the table. Um, this is, I really like this slide because I think it showcases really how much the community's grown over the last few years, especially in terms of the proliferation of organizations that are supporting the innovation and entrepreneurship community across the city. And with the increasing number of organizations, you have increased diversity. The communities that they're serving are increasingly diverse, but there's obviously a lot more work to do. Um, I'm excited. I I'm, I'm feel like we're, we are swimming in the right direction. Um, but it's really incumbent on everybody to be sort of intentional in their investments, in their hiring practices, and in just who they bring to the table and how they create their communities and how they get feedback and how they grow. So that's my story, and that's the Chicago Next story, and I'm more than happy to answer questions on any of it. Hello. Um, can you talk about the experience of taking Think Chicago on the road? <laughs> sure. Um, you know, I think we uh, envisioned it as a way to ensure that, you know, not only are we reaching students who are already here in Chicago or who have the means to come here for a few days in the summer or for a few days in the fall, but that we're really kind of helping to tell the story 
of Chicago's growing sort of tech economy and opportunities to be innovative here, whether it's to start your own company, to join a startup or a growing tech company, or to work for a large corporation that is doing things that's, that might be particularly innovative. Um, and we've been you know, gratified by kind of the interest and the response. We've brought some great companies along with us to tell the story. And it, you know, it, it kind of varies. And when we go to places like Michigan or U of I, for example, we know that there are tons of people who are already connected to Chicago there who may be already planning to come here. And so in those instances, it's almost you know, like we're, we're doing some additional recruiting on behalf of the companies that come with us. Whereas when we're going out to universities that are a little farther away, it may be more kind of foundational work to help foster relationships between companies and universities that maybe never existed before going somewhere like Caltech, which seems like very, very far from Chicago in a lot of ways. We're just sort of starting to learn about how, you know, universities and students that are, you know, far from us think about innovation, think about opportunities for their students after graduation. And so it's a combination of recruiting and learning and proselytizing. And, um, you know, we've reached about 2,000 students this year already. And so I think it's a great way for us to continue to sort of get the message out that there are a lot of really great things happening in kind of tech and innovation here. Okay. So, uh, very good presentation. Um, I noticed there was one part about uh, sort of encouraging entrepreneurship through some existing institutions uh, in Chicago, IIT, uh, um, Columbia, Northwestern, uh, and particularly for uh, foreign-born people to get H1B. Uh, do you happen to know if um, it's required for entrepreneurs uh, sponsored through this program to have been previously affiliated with uh, those universities and institutions, or if they can kind of pop on for application? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, each university handles the process slightly differently. Um, some of them are giving preference to alums or current students or postdocs, uh, and other universities have a more open application process. So right now we're dealing with just the first handful of applicants that have come through the process, and I know that they will be reopening the application uh, kind of for the fall semester sometime this spring, and it will vary by university. In some cases they will I don't know if they'll be exclusive to, but they'll be preferencing alums or affiliates, and others will have more open application processes. So how much uh, of your work is dedicated specifically to tackling challenges that Chicago uniquely faces as a city with a high rate of inequality uh, between different neighborhoods? And like, what are, what are some of the ways that you guys are working to actively foster innovation in, in helping Chicago to become a more equitable city? It's a great and difficult question. I mean, World Business Chicago, inclusive economic growth is in our mission statement. And you know, we have relatively new leadership with former Deputy Mayor Andrea Zopp, who's just come in and brought actually quite a bit of her team uh, over. And neighborhood and strategic initiatives is sort of their core focus area and looking at that through support of small and medium enterprises um, through workforce development and really supporting some you know, existing programs that are designed to uh, revitalize some of the retail and industrial corridors across the city and really looking specifically at like, kind of like hyper-local neighborhood issues. Um, it's interesting coming from kind of the tech side because we're not, as, we're not as close to the ground, right? We're, tech and innovation has been historically sort of up here. And with the Blackstone program, for example, we're making those initial inroads to connect to places like Bethel New Life and connect to places like Blue 1647. And those organizations are really striving to bring innovation and bring technology opportunities to the communities, whether it's through coding camps, workforce training, or more sort of entrepreneurial support. Um, and what we're finding in a lot of cases that where a foundation, for example, might be looking for, all right, how many companies are being created? How many jobs are being created? Like, the work needs to be more foundational right now. The work, it really needs to be about identifying needs on the ground, cultivating that initial sort of density, getting folks who want to be in those networks the training and education and opportunities that, that they need, and being real sort of active listeners and authentic partners to the organizations that understand their neighborhoods best. And that's really hard to do. 
Um, but I think we're on, the, we're on the right track. And I think through this grant money, we've had a great sort of test lab for starting out these programs. And it's our intention to you know, go out and, and capture more investment from other foundations and other stakeholders who are committed to seeing that more inclusive growth in Chicago. And I think it, you know, we're six months into this first year of a program. So it's very hard to say, well, we've seen these results so far. Um, but I know that there's real commitment from the top down with leadership. And it's not to take a top down approach. It's to, it's to be really sort of on the ground and, and listening to the partners who understand the needs and who are already doing the work. So I am a huge fan of the data in your uh, and World Business Chicago. I am amazed by your work, guys. So congratulations. But something I figured out is that it's like, it's not accessible, so you have to kind of dig into it. But I think it's great. It's like one of the greatest jobs I ever seen in my life for data. But do you have any kind of project to make that data more accessible from the web? That's a, actually that's a great question. I mean, we have a really I'm I'm not on the research team, uh, so but we have a really wonderful research team. And it's their job to kind of uncover all of those statistics and do some of the raw analysis taking, you know, sort of stock of all of the available sort of sources of data, everything from BLS to sort of like hyper-local hyper sources, right? And so I think when we get requests, we're like more than happy to share kind of what's behind those numbers, how are they calculated? Um, but I think it would be a really interesting project to figure out if we could open up like a data portal per se so other people would be able to kind of like unpack all of those stats but for the most part we are kind of collecting data from sources sort of all all over the place national international and we always i mean we always cite those sources but you know it's not always evident exactly kind of like how those calculations or you know individual numbers are reached um but we you know continue even for our own selves to keep a better kind of repository or bibliography of all of the different like stats and surveys and things that we track and update every year. Um, so it's a good idea. Uh, I have a question. Um, when you were talking about bringing thought leaders in at the table and um, how when you first started, most of those leaders were older white males. Um, I've been at some of these meetings when it comes into education, but World Business Chicago and a lot of organizations, um, I was the only minority at that table. Um, not the only woman, but the only minority. How do you guys, um, have, you, have you thought about talking to those organizations about having better representation? So I'm not sure which organization. No, I know, but I don't know which sort of organization, talking to which organizations. Technology organizations. So I was there with um, the universities and colleges, as well as the large organizations, Cisco, Microsoft, the big ones, they were all there. So you're, yeah, so you're talking about more like with the kind of the workforce development type of meetings. All right, I know I know what you're talking about, and certainly I agree with you. I mean, there are no, it is. It's important to get stakeholders at the table. You know, unfortunately, a lot of the time when you are doing this sort of formative work of like, who's out there and who's willing to support us in this initiative, and you're looking at those big corporate players and they send their representatives those are the representatives that they send and it's not ideal and it is difficult when you're coming from a position of asking for resources and asking for support to qualify that ask to say we'd like your help but we don't like like your help if you're able to send this type of person to us and i think it would be great if we were in a position to do so i think there are some like companies that would be more responsive than others i mean those are often kind of large you know corporate structures that are very difficult to navigate but I, I hear you and I do understand that especially in conversations like that you often get a lot of talk and like not a lot of kind of action and follow-up um, <laughs> I mean we can we can talk further offline I, I mean I know I know exactly which project you're talking about which isn't mine, but <laughs> uh, I would be happy to talk through some of those challenges with you because I, I understand. What initiate, initiates times and spaces does uh, World 
business count in Chicago offer to incubate businesses? Um, Initiatives, I think that means. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not totally sure. I under initiative. Like, uh, uh, Illinois Technology Council has Tech, uh, Tech Nexus. Right. Yeah, we don't. I mean, we don't have physical space. We are a lean team of four. I mean, Chicago Next is four people working to support programs, and we partner with a lot of those innovation spaces. But we don't have physical space to incubate businesses ourselves. I mean, we have a partnership program with a number of the co-working spaces across the city that we can provide discounts to companies that are coming in and looking for space. Um, but we ourselves don't have like physical incubation space ourselves. And then events, like events and uh, initiatives? Um, in, in terms of incubating business? Well, we're not, I mean, we're not an incubator. We're an economic development organization that helps to, you know, support the city broadly. I mean, we put on things like the Chicago Venture Summit that helps to showcase companies that are looking to pitch for funding from venture, uh, venture capital groups, for example. Um, we have within WBC a number of programs that support small and medium enterprises. For example, our CASE program, which is uh, a matching program that helps small businesses work with large anchor institutions on their buying. Um, but again, we're not, we're not a formal incubator ourselves. And uh, you've been working with Bethel New Life. I think the question is, what programs have you helped them develop? Um, so they're part of our cohort for the Blackstone Challenge. So they received a grant from us this year. Um, I don't remember the exact number. I think it's $125,000 uh, to help form their business innovation and tech program, which is really helping to kind of translate some of that technology to community businesses, help with technical assistance and mentorship to a cohort of companies that they are entrepreneurs that they are working with within uh, their community. Well, thank you very much, Aya. We appreciate it.